I've been working hard on Dewdrop Dynasty for the last two years with the hopes of finally releasing it before the end of 2024. But as you can tell, that plan didn't work out. For those who didn't know, I still work full time. I'm married with a family and I'm actually having another baby in a few short weeks. But even though progress has been slower than expected, I'm excited to share what I've been working on for the last couple of months. Now, some of you might know this already, but currently our beta testers have been playing through the entire game. And a lot of the problems and feedback we received were related to the game's UI and menus. There's these weird glitches where certain menus would open and close at different times or there'd be a delay. It just was a really buggy system from code that was made probably like four years ago. So this led me to create a state machine where whatever current UI is being displayed is the current state and it prevents overlapping menus or just problems in general. And it's beautiful. It's so nice to have a system that just actually works. No more annoying menus. And speaking of annoying menus, I was getting pretty frustrated by just navigating the title screen and the option settings. Turns out that using a mouse is just way more comfortable than using arrow keys. So I went back and reworked the, the menus. So you use a mouse and a keyboard or Joy-Con, whatever you want to use, and it just works and it's beautiful. I also add this basic system for localization so you can switch between languages. Right now it's only for the UI because we're just using Google Translate, don't hate me, but so far so good. Also for those who are curious, the way it works is basically there's this big Excel spreadsheet and in one column is English and the next column is in another language and Godot has this built-in feature where you can just swap between the spreadsheet columns. It's it's actually really nice. And the last part of the UI that got overhauled was the minimap. For every room in the game, there's obviously a tiny minimap version of it. And I was creating these by hand and it was pretty painful. So what I did is I actually made this minimap generator where it just basically takes the tile sets of a room, shrinks it down to pixels, and then from there I can crop them, make them transparent, and throw them in the game. I'm actually really happy I did this as it saved a ton of time for me, but the results kind of look like a, a small intestine or something. They're kind of gross looking. So in the end, I took these intestine looking maps, I simplified them and just broke them down to their core features. That way it just was like less visual pollution on your eyes. And I'm pretty happy with the results. And lastly, I added a quick map feature as it was annoying opening and closing the menu constantly. And this way you can still run around and still kind of see where you're going. I also worked on a ton of other little bug fixes and polishing things, but that was kind of the gist of the main UI overhaul. Next, I finally got to work on something, something I've been wanting to do for literally years. And that's finally creating the artwork for the locations. I'm so tired of looking at these blank backgrounds. It makes me sad. So I took time to completely redo the artwork for Pipe World and I added ambience, I added waterfalls, I added lighting. I even add these flies that react when you get close to them. It's amazing how something as simple as adding new artwork can totally transform a game. The other area I worked on was this spidery location. I'm not going to reveal too much about it, but here's what it looked like before and here's what it looks like now. It's amazing what a nice background, some foreground elements and some parallax scrolling can do for your game. It does wonders. Chef's kiss. I've also been playing around with puzzle ideas, NPCs, and enemies, and I found that it's a lot easier to come up with all those if you actually have the artwork for your location done. Here's a little physics-based puzzle I came up with using a spider web, which I think is kind of cool, and I think adding more of these throughout the game is really going to breathe some life into it. I'm still working through the rest of the areas, and I still have a lot of artwork to do, but it's amazing about how quickly this game feels like it's coming together just by adding in the visuals. Who would have thought? And lastly, I wanted to share some of the things I've experimented with and just some of the things that have been helpful for me during this development process. The first thing I wanted to share was I was playing around with the idea of having aim assist. I was thinking about how sometimes it's a little bit difficult to hit enemies and what if you had aim assist? Would it make it easier or would it feel obnoxious? And after implementing the game, I am actually pretty happy not having it. There's something about it that feels kind of clunky and feels like you don't have control over what you're doing. But this was a pretty cool experiment and I had fun shooting these little dummies. Another random thing is that one day I spent the whole day trying to figure out why my file size was massive. And it turns out there was a glitch with Godot and these resource files making them huge. It was super odd and it was making the game take forever to load, but I just thought it was kind of funny, so I figured I would share it. And lastly, I finally implemented a debugging tool so I can quickly go to different rooms. This is a game changer. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner, but it makes just testing out different areas, which I'm doing a lot right now, so much easier. And that's pretty much it. Most of my time now is going to be spent working on artwork, implementing the rest of the enemies and the boss fights, which are a huge part of the game. Every day the game gets more more and more polished and stable and it just feels better to play and it makes me so excited. I even got a Steam Deck recently and playing it on there was such an awesome experience that I'm so excited and I can't wait for the release 
of Dewdrop in 2025. As always, there's a lot more going behind the scenes that I can't share just because I don't want to spoil it. But stay tuned and make sure to wishlist the game if you haven't already as it helps me out so much. And if you're interested in making games yourself, you should check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data, analysis, programming, and AI. And one thing I really like about it is Brilliant helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. Not to mention that Brilliant makes it easy to learn anywhere right on your phone, with fun lessons that you can do whenever you have the time. Whether you're diving into a new topic or doing a quick practice session, you can always level up on the go in just minutes. Brilliant's growing number of programming courses are a great way to build foundations and learn real-world applications. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a built-in drag-and-drop editor. Learn essential coding elements from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. And most importantly, develop your mind to think like a programmer and begin to write complex programs to build games and applications. I mean, hey, yep, you got me on games. With that said, if you don't know where to start, Brilliant is a great start. And to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash goodgist or scan the QR code on screen, or you can just click the link in the description. There's there's plenty of ways, people. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription, so check it out. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and check out one of these videos that YouTube thinks you might like.